Hey guys, uh, just to kind of start this video off, this video is not about self-hosting, it's not about Docker, it's not about any of that kind of stuff. So if you came here hoping for that, uh, sorry, uh, catch you in the next one, but uh, this one is something that I've been wanting to do again for a long time. So about a year, year and a half ago, I made a video talking about uh, this setup that you can see here. This is a Raspberry Pi. Well, it was it was a Raspberry Pi uh, in Dash infotainment system with Android Auto and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and it worked well until it didn't, um, just because of the way I had built it and the way I had it configured, it overheated on me on a really long road trip and I fried that Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig and uh, I just, I didn't have the time to deal with it th anymore right then. So I took it out and uh, just went back to a standard uh, in dash, you know, single DIN Kenwood system like you can see here. I've been rocking this since then. Uh, I actually had this set up with, uh, with this setup as well. And I've noticed how much I relied on that Android Auto and the mapping and all that sort of stuff. I am I am super directionally challenged. Uh, I couldn't tell you north from south uh, if I didn't have a big mountain showing me which way was west. So uh, I really rely heavily on Android Auto and maps and that sort of thing. And I've missed having uh, the ability to have that in-dash navigation system. So recently I remembered that I had this Raspad 3 uh, sitting in a drawer somewhere that I wasn't using. And uh, so that's what I'm going to install in my dash. I'm going to take this and uh, put it over there. But before we do that, I kind of want to walk through what I did kind of behind the scenes and how this is going to work. Let's actually start on the outside and then work our way in so we can kind of get an idea of what my plan of attack is here. So like I said, this is a Raspad 3. The nice folks over at Raspad sent this to me. I did a review on it um, and then it just went in a drawer because I didn't really have any use for it. So, like I said the other day, I realized that I had it and that I thought I could come up with a way to install it in my dash. So obviously this is the front, this is where all of the touchy stuff goes on, this is where you're going to interact with the interface, that sort of thing, right? That's what we expect. So we're going to flip it over and we're going to see this. So this, um, what you're seeing here, this frame around the edge here. This is the installation kit for this double DIN system for this faceplate for my specific car. That's how um, I'm going to clip this into my dashes with this assembly here, this, this, this mounting plate. I mean, that's what it is, right? However, in order to get the mounting plate attached to the RAS pad, I designed and uh, 3D printed these very basic uh, reinforcements here. I gave myself some wiggle room so I didn't have to be super exact. Uh, I thought I had enough bolts but this one's too long, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, but it's it's bolted in, uh, it's not going anywhere. I've been, I've been messing around with this for a while now and I think it's gonna be fine. If not, I can go back to the drawing board again. Now, uh, because of the way uh, Open Auto Pro, which is the operating system I've got on here, works, it can't use the onboard um, audio or Bluetooth. So that's what this is. This is an external USB audio card. So I'll have, um, uh, my my speaker out, so my three and a half millimeter out uh, will plug into here, and then we'll plug into here, and I'll use the auxiliary port on this. I'm going to recess this into the dash a little bit with some other stuff I've got. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But of course, in order to get this to work, I had to plug it in via USB, and I didn't want is it that side? Nope, it's this side. I didn't want a big nasty cable hanging out of the side of here, so um, I cut a hole in this. Uh, so that the cable can come out. You're never going to see the back of this because it's going to be in the dash. So that's kind of what's going on there. Um, so let's go ahead and get the back off of this and take a look at what's going on inside. I didn't even realize it now, until now, but this is the screwdriver that came with the RAS pad. Um, it's the one I'm going to use. I didn't even realize that this was uh, from the same company, but uh, I guess things were just meant to be here. So let's get this taken, taken take apart. Okay, so the screws are out um, and I've unplugged the uh, the USB uh, audio adapter here as well as the fan uh, that will cool everything just so I can set that aside and we can take a look at what's going on in here. Uh, if you didn't catch that video anyway about the Raspad 3. So basically it puts, you put a Raspberry Pi 4 in here. This is Raspberry Pi 4, eight gig. Of course, I've added some heat sinks just for additional cooling. Um, and then it breaks out um, with um, you know, HDMI, USB-C, um, Ethernet, so that all breaks out into this board so that you can have um, all of your all your connections out here if you need them. I do actually appreciate that it's a full-size HDMI that comes out here. Um, and of course, uh, Ethernet, a couple of USB-3s, uh, power, audio. I'm not going to use any of this. None of this matters. Uh, it's, just, it's part of the system. So over here, this is where, this is where things are going to get a little bit less than desirable if I'm being completely honest. So in order to power this 
on, you have to push the button, this power button right up here, uh, this one right there, not that one, that is for the uh, micro SD card. This power button has to be activated in order to turn the system on. I've reached out to Raspad about this. They said that that's the only way you can do it at this point. We're just gonna leave it at that. I feel like there's probably something that could be done, but uh, I don't have the electrical know-how to, uh, to modify this board or bypass anything on this board so that when I turn my car on, the power that comes in over here, right there, will just automatically power it on. It doesn't matter, I don't care. This is what's gonna work for me, at least so I can get uh, the navigation back in my dash over here. So <clears throat> that's that's basically all that's going on. We've got some speakers that's plugged in here and uh, here. Uh, this, uh, this line right here actually goes up to this and this battery pack changed everything for me. Um, let me explain why. So when you look at the back of this, I, hopefully you can see that, I mean, if I can get it at the right angle anyway. There it is. It says it requires 15 volts, two amps. And that was going to complicate things quite a bit because I thought I was gonna to have to get a power inverter, plug that in and then plug a 15 volt adapter into that and then plug that into this. And I thought it was gonna be this huge, huge nightmare. And then I realized when I looked at this, let's get this turned around, uh, right there, 11.1 volts is what this outputs. Yay, uh, that means I can power this whole thing on 12 volts. I've been, it's been charging for days on 12 volts. It's worked perfectly fine. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to tap in to, I've got a bunch of stuff in here, but this, uh, this power adapter, this old, if, if you're from the 80s or 90s, this cigarette plug right here is gonna get repurposed. I'm gonna take out the whole center console here, tap into the wiring behind that, um, and power this uh, from that 12 volt source right there. I'll run all of the cables up behind the dash, into here, uh, get everything plugged in, and uh, then hopefully we'll be able to get things going. Also, I should mention, uh, I mentioned in the previous video, um, but also, like I said, you can't use the, the onboard uh, uh, audio or, uh, or, or Bluetooth for whatever reason, I'm not sure why. Uh, so you saw that I've got this uh, USB audio uh, adapter here that was plugged in, uh, actually just over to right here. Also, I've got this, this Ugreen Bluetooth adapter that's plugged in here so that, um, so that I can have Bluetooth connectivity to my phone and do wireless Android Auto. I believe you can also do um, CarPlay with this, um, but I don't have any uh, Apple devices, nor do I care to. So um, so everything is gonna be wireless uh, Android Auto on here because of the uh, the USB Bluetooth here. Um, and then of course, I can use the, the Wi-Fi for whatever reason, just not the audio or the Bluetooth. So I'm super excited to get this put together. So what I wanna do next, I'm gonna get this put back together. I need to tear apart my dash uh, in order to uh, to get in here, move things around here. I've got some, some different uh, mounting adapters somewhere here. Uh, that are the doubled in adapters that will give me some, some more reinforcement to hold everything in place up here. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna move this back a little bit so the button uh, doesn't get pressed by any of this. Uh, so now I just gotta tear everything apart and then we'll take another look. So the other thing I almost forgot is that of course all of these are being held, the, these, these mounting, these 3D printed mounting plates here on both sides are being held in with you know nuts and bolts and whatnot. And um, in my trunk, I've got a thousand watt uh, 12 inch subwoofer and uh, I wanna keep my nuts in place, haha. -ha. So uh, I went and got um, some, some Loctite, some thread lock, whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna thread lock uh, all of these so that they don't come loose and rattle apart uh, when the base hits. So that's actually my next step. And then, then I'll get everything taken apart and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are just a couple of minutes later. Everything has been Loctited, uh, including all of the nuts over there. Uh, so now I can dig into the car and uh, hopefully get this thing all put together the right way. Okay, so uh, dash is apart. Obviously, you can see that here. Uh, I've changed out the mounting brackets that were holding the receiver in. And here you can see that I've moved it back so that it's recessed into the dash a little bit. Uh, again, so that it won't bump into anything uh, that's going on there. Uh, I do still need to run the, the wire from here. Of course, that's just our three and a half millimeter cable um, that, uh, that I've got here. So it's actually the exact same one that I used before. So that's gonna get plugged in right there like so, <clears throat> and then uh, this end, uh, like I said before, will get plugged into uh, this USB adapter there. And somewhere in that <laughs> uh, mess of cables, there is a three and a half millimeter for, um, for the microphone that I've got right here. I'm gonna have to dig that out um, and get some stuff hooked up. Also, I remembered that uh, this is already here. This was the 15 uh, watt, uh, 12 volt, uh, or yeah, 12 volt or five volt, three amp uh, plug. I'm gonna cut these wires off right here, bypass this and use this as my power source. Uh, I'm still going to do the, um, 
you know, the, the, the butt connectors with the crimp and all of that kind of stuff here. Uh, a lot of people were mad that I had used wire nuts before, even though it was a temporary setup. Uh, in fact, there's one right there that's going to piss a lot of people off. Maybe I'll fix that too, but maybe one down there. Anyway, I'll fix, I'll get all that cleaned up. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to have to actually take out my entire dash, uh, which or my entire console, which I'm thrilled about. It's not difficult. I just hate doing it. So, uh, so that's kind of where we are now. Like I said, I've got this mounted in. Um, I've already test fit um, my, my mounting assembly here and it worked. So now it's just a matter of getting everything put back together and wired up appropriately. Okay, so all of the wiring in the dash is now done. I've still got to plug in, you know, like my uh, my hazards here. I've still got to plug in uh, the actual uh, wiring harness into this. But I've got to do that when everything is closer. But uh, basically, you can see the audio is going from there to there. My microphone is going into there, uh, over to behind my steering wheel there. Um, and it's all like the, the power cable is going to poke out, but it's going to be on the driver's side uh, next to the steering wheel and the vent. You'll never see it. Um, so now I just got to get it all clipped back together and test it out. Okay, so we've got most everything put back together. All the wiring is done. All this is obviously in place. It's not going anywhere. I'm happy with that. What we want to make sure, though, is when I turn the key on that these lights light up here. So let's... And yeah, there they go. So now we know we're getting power to the device. It's charging. So uh, I should be able then to uh, turn this thing on. Okay, so we've got a little red light right there. It tells us it's, it's on. So now let's see if we can get a better focus. Come on. Give this a second. There is my boot screen. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of glare here, but... There's my boot screen, which means everything should be working. Uh, and now I can actually do some testing with it. So I've also got this. This is, like it says here, an OBD2 diagnostic scanner for Android. Uh, this connects via uh, Bluetooth, which I appreciate. Uh, so I can plug this in under my dash down there. And then I should be able to pull up information here uh, on my uh, screen here with regards to, um, you know, engine temperature, RPM, all that kind of stuff, all of the kind of cool dashboard stuff you want to see on this. So I'm going to go ahead and get this plugged in and see if it works. Okay, so it turns out this one was the wrong one. Like I said, I've got two of these. I plugged it in, plugged in the other one, rather. And here we go. Now, uh, now we've got our engine temperature. We've got our current load, our RPMs. I apologize for the glare. Um, but now everything's working the way I would want it to. Um, and of course, if I want to, I can just, you know, exit out of here and uh, go back. Come on, focus. And there's music that's uh, that's playing or was playing anyway. Um, but everything seems to be working now. I'm stoked about that. Uh, it is big. It is big on my dash. Uh, and I'm okay with that. Let's put, there, there we go. That looks better. So now we can kind of get an idea of what this looks like on my dash. It's big. Uh, I did unfortunately lose uh, access to uh, my uh, my hazards up here. That's, that's whatever. It is what it is. I don't ever use them anyway. Um, but there it is. It's on my dash. It's working. Uh, you know, I can go up here to Android Auto and click resume and come right back into here. Um, and give it a second to, to do its thing. And there we go. Now, now I've got my maps, I've got my music, everything is here, um, and it's all in my dash. So again, I know this isn't gonna be everybody's cup of tea here, uh, having to manually intervene uh, to turn things on and off. Um, but this is this is a solution that works for me. Uh, it puts a bigger screen in my dash. It's a more elegant solution in my opinion. Aesthetically speaking anyway, again, the, uh, the one that I had before set up, let me grab this. Let's take a quick look at this and see, uh, maybe maybe it'll be, make a, a bit more uh, sense as to why I feel like what I've currently got now is a better solution. Okay, so again, this is the screen that I'm currently using. Uh, and right there, there's that, that power cable I saying you won't be able to see if you're in the passenger seat. But anyway, this again, <laughs> comparatively, um, this is the screen that I'm or that I was using uh, that I that I did this with initially. And you can see that it just it didn't look good aesthetically. Uh, the temperature got to it. It you know it started coming apart. Um, you can kind of see where it's breaking apart. The it just it didn't look good, and uh, it was a much it was a much smaller screen, um, and I just think this looks better. It will be more uh, more useful for me, um, and I just think it looks good uh, overall. So uh, yeah, that's it. I'll try to put links to everything in the description. I do want to give a big shout out to uh, Raspad for providing uh, the device itself, uh, Blue Wave Studios for providing the newest version of. Um, of the uh, Open Auto Pro. In fact, if I think if I come out, let me let me double check. Exit. Oops. Oops. Exit. 
and then come to here and then go to settings and go to version. Yeah, there is version 16 of Open Auto Pro. So again, thanks to again, both um, Raspad and Blue Wave Studios for providing everything I needed for this. Uh, all of the other stuff I purchased, that was all me. Um, but that there it is, it's up, it's working. I'm super excited about it. And again, I will have links to everything in the description down below. So be sure to let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Of course, the, the, the description will be full of all kinds of hopefully useful information so that you can maybe build one of these for yourself. Uh, I'll try to link to the... Um, the STL, STL files that I designed uh, for those for those brackets that I used to uh, get the, the Raspad mounted to uh, to the, uh, the the installation kit for the double den. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Thanks so much for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.